Hey everybody, in this recording we are going to solve the equation 27x to the third power plus 64 equals zero. Now if you are being a little math basic if you will, you will try to solve it like this. You'll say all right 27x cubed plus 64 equals zero and you might subtract 64 from both sides. Don't do this, this is not good. 27 x to the third equals negative 64. All the people watching it on mute, you know, they're copying this down right now. I'm about to scribble it all out. And then divide both sides by 27, you get negative 64 over 27. Cube root of both sides. And you get x equals cube root of negative 64 is negative four. Cube root of 27 is three. Seems great, right? But the biggest power is three. We should be getting three answers. In particular, when it's a sum or difference of two cubes, you'll get one real answer and two imaginary answers. No good. This is not how we do it, okay? This is still a polynomial equation, and we still solve polynomial equations, first and foremost, by factoring when we can. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna factor first. So 27, x to the third plus 64 equals zero. If you factor this using my method, we know we put on our glasses. This is not factoring yet, even though there's parentheses, this is our thinking, sorry, our thinking step. What is being cubed to make 27x cubed? If you said 3x, you are an absolute brilliant human being. 64, what's being cubed makes 64? Four. From here, we set up a binomial and trinomial set of parentheses. Our binomial, and I'll attach the playlist, uh, or the video rather, to the lesson on how to factor a sum and difference of two cubes using my goofy method, which I think is A plus. But take the threes, put them away, and you just write down what you have left. That's three X plus four. Now we get our quadratic trinomial, three X times three X, 9x squared. Again, this is only for sums and differences of cubes. A lot of people like using this all the time. You try using it on difference of squares. That's another factoring method. That's this whole different thing, right? Next, we do 3x times 4. You don't do the signs yet. That's going to be a 12x. And then 4 times 4, 16. And then we use our mnemonic device, SOAP, S-O-A-P. Pay attention to where I'm writing them. S stands for same, same as the original problem. O stands for opposite, and AP is always plus. From there, here you will get one real answer, okay? From here, I promise you <clears throat> it's prime. You will have to use quadratic formula, and you will always get two imaginary solutions from that part. Okay, so let's just finish this up. Let's get our one real answer. I'm just gonna scooch over here, save some room. Three X plus four is equal to zero. Let's get X alone, subtract four. Three X is equal to negative four, and then divide both sides by three. X equals negative four thirds. Now you might say, but that's the answer you just scribbled out before, right? But when I do the method that we did earlier, that the naughty method, it's not good, we only get the one real answer. So if you're only looking for real answers, sure, knock yourself out. But usually, you're at this point in your life, you're probably looking for all solutions, all right? So now we're gonna go ahead into this one. This is a quadratic that's not factorable. It's never factorable. I know it looks factorable, it looks really good. <clears throat> not factorable. We would use quadratic formula. A is equal to nine, B is equal to negative 12, and C is equal to 16. Our quadratic formula is X equals negative B, just to have it up here, plus and minus the square root of B squared minus <clears throat> 4AC all over 2A. So we're gonna go ahead and use these values in there, and we'll work it out down here. X equals opposite of B, positive 12, plus minus the square root of b squared, negative 12 squared, which is a positive 144, minus 4a times c, 
right there. Now, <clears throat> four times nine times 16. Some of you are gonna like kind of panic because it's gonna be a big number. Please don't freak out. It's going to be okay. Um, we have a few ways that we could go about doing it. I might do, think it through first, like what order you wanna multiply stuff in, okay? So I'm just gonna scooch up here for a second where I have a little more room. Four times nine times 16, okay? I think we should know four times 16 by now. We've multiplied it a lot in Algebra 2. It's 64. So if I think of this as 64 times nine, well, maybe in your head you do 64 times 10. That's 640. And since I only really want 64 times nine, I need to subtract 64 from that. Also in my head, because we're smart, we can handle this, I'm gonna start first subtract 40. That's gonna get me 600. How much do I still have to subtract? 24 more. 600 minus 20 is gonna be 580. Minus four more is 576. Replay that if you have to, but it's 576. All over, and we'll get to that in a minute, all over two times A. A was nine, two times nine is 18. E equals 12 plus minus the square root of. We have 144 minus 576 all over 18. I'm subtracting these, so I'm gonna subtract it the other way and make the answer negative. So what do I have? I have 576, sorry, I have work all over. Spatial planning, not great today. Oh, I shouldn't have a line there. It's gonna look like division. What am I doing? 576 minus 144. That's a two, that's a three, that's a 432, right? So it's a negative 432 underneath my radical. Now, 432, we can break down. So am I about to go to a new page? I really wanted to fit it on one page. I'm sorry, forgive me. So 144 minus 576 is negative 432. So what do I have? X equals, I already forgot, 12 plus minus the square root of negative 432 over 18. You're gonna have a calculator a lot of the time and you can use that to help you, but let's fully break this down as if we did not have the ability to do that. 432 is two times 216, half of 400, half of 32. 216 is two and 108. 108 is two and 54. 54 is two and 26. Seven, am I on the screen? Yes. Okay. 27 is three times three times three. All right. What is the prime factorization and the negative we handle? So let's do a couple things. X equals 12 plus minus. I'm gonna take the I out, that's from the negative. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I get into more detail in a different example. I think for number 19, so you can jump ahead to where I talk about that, but square root of a negative, it's imaginary. I stands for imaginary, it's a mathematical value we start using basically in algebra two. So it looks like my prime factorization is four twos and three threes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's a product, it's not a big number. It takes a pair to make a square, so when you take the square root, this comes out, this comes out, this comes out, and anything that comes out multiplies all over 18. X equals 12 plus minus two times two is four times three is 12. 12 I radical, what's left inside, three all over 18. It is not until now that you can reduce and anything under the radical you do not touch. You only reduce, bing, bang, and boom. What number goes into all three of those? Six. So if I knock a six out of all of these, also you cannot combine these. This is attached to stuff that this one doesn't have, okay? Our final answer is X. Oops, I guess I'll make this an arrow that looks funny. 
x equals, knock a 6 out of that, that's 2 plus minus 2i root 3 over 3. So how many answers is this right here? This is two imaginary answers. Maybe you're allowed to stop here and just write no real solution. That's fine. This is better. That's fine. Depends on what your teacher says is okay. And then we got one real answer, don't forget, of negative 4 thirds. So we circle all of that. X equals negative 4 over 3. Amazing. So we have one real right there. And we have two imaginary. Bam. There you have it. I tried to do it as fast as I could, but also give a good explanation for you to fully fundamentally break it down. And uh, yeah, I hope you feel pretty good about it. You're probably going to see one just like this slightly different numbers in your near future. Learn it, know it, love it. Make up your own examples, switch some numbers around. It's going to be wonderful. If you understand, thumbs up. If you're not picking up a hint, thumbs down. I don't know. Have a great day. Click through for the next video. Adios.